sanctify you a fast. Call a solemn assembly, gather the elders and all the inhabitants of the land into the house of the Lord your God, and cry unto the Lord, alas, for the day. For the day of the Lord is at hand, and as a destruction from the Almighty it shall come. It is not the meat cut off before your eyes, yea, joy and gladness from the house of our God. The seed is rotten under their clods. The garners are laid desolate, the barns are broken down, and the corn is withered. How do the beasts groan? The herds and the cattle are perplexed because they have no pasture. Yea, the flocks of sheep are made desolate. O Lord, to thee I will cry, for the fire hath devoured the pastures of the wilderness, and the flame hath burned all the trees of the field. The beasts of the field cry unto thee, for the rivers of of waters are dried up, and the fire hath devoured the pastures of the wilderness. The vine is dried up, and the fig tree languisheth, the pomegranate tree, the palm tree also, and the apple tree, even the trees of the field are withered, because joy is withered away from the sons of men. Gird yourselves and lament, you priests howl. You ministers of the altar, come lie all night in sackcloth, you ministers of my God, for the meat offering and drink offering is withholden from the house of your God. And be ashamed, O you husbandmen howl, O you vine dressers, for the wheat and for the barley, because the harvest of the field is perished. The field is wasted, the hand mourneth, and the corn is wasted, and the new wine is dried up by the oil that languisheth. Lament like a virgin, girded up with sackcloth for the husband of her youth. He has laid my vine waste, for a nation has come up upon the land strong and without number, whose teeth are the teeth of a lion, and he hath the cheek of the great lion, and he hath laid my vine waste and barked my fig tree. He hath made it clean bare and cast it away, and the branches thereof are made white. I needn't say any more. That's uh, the first chapter of Joel. Most people look to the prophecy of Joel in uh, Joel 2, 23, the the rejoicing chapter. (laughs) They forget that it's a pretty short deal with Joel, but they forget that the first chapter of Joel is basically, this is it, the day of the Lord, and, and no one is safe, and, uh, Everything is dried up and everything's been hewn down and, and, and thrown down and, 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 and broken. The markets are broken. The fields lay bare. That's almost a picture of what we've had last summer. The corn is withered. Okay? The, um, there is no hope in the future. There is a nation come up that has is, that is, that is stripped all my trees and laid waste everything. Well, um, obviously, we've had some confirmation on the uh, on the word given a couple of days ago, which, I mean, is unfortunate. But I think there's a couple of scenarios. You know, one one scenario is there's an aversion to World War Three and a resumption of leadership where this issue is put off the docket for, and, and to be reviewed in a probationary way a little while hence. And now the other is where there is no election. I mean, I'm putting a lot of faith in an election of, you know, um, but you have to understand, it's, I'm not looking at this literally like looking at the news. I'm looking at it in a more spiritual way. So to me, it, it would be like Romney would represent, um, say, leadership. I don't care if he's a Mormon or not. I don't care if he's an atheist, a Mormon, a, uh, a, a puts a, a beanie on his head with a propeller on it. I don't care. This is what I'm focusing on. 
that uh, he represents, uh, him and Ryan represent um, leadership and, um, you know, principles and, and um, you know, um, kind of like, uh, gee, who to thunk, you know, the common sense, if you will. They're not theoreticians, they're pragmatists, they want to, uh, and they're reformers, so they want to reform and, and uh, uh, policy so that people can um, get the jack boot off their necks so they can um, do their businesses, do their markets, whatever they want to do, you know, to get the government out of the way so they can function. The other um, scenario is through idiocy. And through, um, you know, what you have now in the White House, I and mean, I finally kind of understand, because it's, you can see how one person could be so dangerous they could get millions killed, yes? Do you see that right now? Do you see that right now? One bumbling fool can get millions killed because he's a, like Carter, he was a theoretician. He's applying the theories that he learned in school and the theories about government and about the way the world should be and all that that he learned it um, in school to the real world. And it doesn't fit with the professors and their ivory towers and their theories and their, basically it's just, it's communism, but they have a theory behind it as to why it's the best fit for the world, a one-size-fits-all solution, which is easy in the classroom, but cannot um, possibly occur. Cannot possibly occur. Not like Carter, nothing Obama does will work, but it, what it will do is signal to the world, this is an idiot, let's riot, let's go, let's kill America, or whatever it is, however they're whipped up. And, the, you know, what you're not seeing is all the spiritual forces behind all this. No, not Islam. Islam is, uh, Islam is um, just another religion. It's, that's not the motivating factor here. Um, that it, uh, it's used. Oh, you've insulted Islam. I'm going to go burn your city down or, or whatever. But uh, that's not the issue. What gets people to burn things down, you know, and, and, and go to war, basically, is organization a promise of a better life, a promise of better economic conditions. Um, that was why they got rid of Gaddafi and uh, Mubarak, because they actually thought they were going to have better economic conditions, but what they did is they handed over power to an even more sinister outfit, and they have no money, and that's why they're out doing what they're doing, and they're able to be organized. And, and need I be cynical? Probably by the CIA. Um, you know, the the... the What's happened is the United States policy of the Middle East has now been completely destroyed. The people that created the policy are acting like they have a success and they're, they're going to still try, because there's so many fools. This is why I, I, I find it impossible to go to movies and um, listen to music because there's no one to listen to. Um, I, I don't want to listen to someone that's promoting what you see today. I don't want to promote someone whose God is himself. I don't want to promote someone who thinks that um, if you believe in the Constitution, you're a racist. So that has eliminated about three quarters of Hollywood actors right there. In other words, people that have no common sense. And, um, and the only reason they're doing what they're doing is because they want to get a, they, they want to be in a movie. They want to, they want to work. So they'll say any, any, even if it doesn't make any sense. If you don't believe in Sharia law, you're a racist. Uh, but we're the party that's the best friends of women, and yet Islam is welcome. Well, Islam, they can't have the two in the same room. So, I mean, that kind of thing is impossible for me to say, go pay, even buy a ticket to a movie where there's someone like that in it who says things like that or who tweets them. And then um, actually go into the attendance and cheer for him, the hero, after basically saying it's okay to kill me because I don't want Sharia law. So therefore, I siding with um, and 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 what even more mind blowing is when women, especially these pro choice women, and and gay marriage women and gay marriage men are um, backing up Sharia law and the whole, they're still chanting about the Arab Spring and even the media, the entire media, 
is still thinking this thing's going to turn around. But it did confirm the word the other day, and overwhelmingly did it not, the word given here. That's more common sense, right, that things would not get better, but that you would start to see confirmation of World War III, what it might look like. What you're not seeing is the forces organizing what looks like a rabble, but is really a well-organized situation. And it has nothing to do with a movie that some amateur movie maker made or, or, or uh, about uh, Islam or, or anything of the sort. This was organized for uh, quite a while, and uh, it took place. And um, for whatever reason, maybe, you know, it could be something as like discrediting Obama's, uh, which is, I, I, he discredits himself every time he opens his mouth. I, I can't imagine that anyone wouldn't, would be blind to that. But, it, you know, his policy on the Middle East that we should in, embrace the change of these, overthrow these dictators and the people are rising up and this is democracy and this is what it looks like and I, Obama, have brought in the age of peace. And that's basically the way he's been. And I've done it all myself. I, I was the one that gave Egypt the $2 billion and the, to the uh, Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt. And I'm the one who has um, you know, engineered Libya's liberation. And I'm the one that killed bin Laden. I personally killed bin Laden. Uh, I personally did all these things because I am uh, better than you and I am the Messiah. And I brought about the age of peace and now what we need is a good dialogue with um, uh, Iran and, and uh, you, you know, allow them to have a nuke because it's, after all, it's only fair that we all have nukes. Look the other way on that and get into a dialogue so that we all kind of understand each other and then we can have nuclear reduction as brothers and sisters singing Kumbaya, holding hands, and Ali Akbar, blah, blah, blah. And the reason you see people that are for women's rights and gay rights and, and, um, and all that, supporting Sharia law, which wouldn't support their positions, is because they believe that they are in cahoots, that that's the hammer that's going to bring about their world order, if you will, because the, the, the left is the new world, world order. So they believe that's going to usher in their new world order, which is a, a socialist, communist, Islamo-fascist state, because with Islamo-fascism, you can literally um, terrorize and tyrannize the people into not uh, being able to, you know, into giving up any and all aspirations to have careers or lives, but to do what the government tells you so that they feel like the, the Islamicists will be, the radical ones will be there to be their enforcers. And of course, this is what they're missing, these theoreticians. They have a whole plan. And it's, it's a demonic spirit because the media and these various groups all go along with it by rote, with all of it. You know, the godlessness, gay marriage, abortion, as their gods, and then embracing of Sharia law, which would kill them for the same. Which is, I know, it, it's, it's hard to watch people that far gone in positions of power in, in uh, sports, uh, government, entertainment, um, to promote complete and total um, death-worshipping policies that would basically, um, well, they can't see the connection between the 90% dead and, and themselves. They believe they'll have a seat at a table and then they actually believe you won't be here, but they will be. See, they have a secret blood lust to get rid of you. That is anybody who would oppose them for any reason. You know, you must have something going right with you if you don't believe, as Obama does, and defends, I don't know how many times he voted, but several times, voted for partial birth abortion, where the fetus is completely conscious and could live outside the womb with some assistance, but could live. And that is what he, that's his God. 
that's all their God. I mean, that's, that's their main right. That sodomy and, um, is, a, is a divine right, and gays are superior to all other people uh, and should run everything, and everyone should be forced to be gay because it's, it's their God. It, it's their God, along with abortion, especially late-term abortion, and um, godlessness. In other words, no outside God but yourself. And that is the platform this year of the Democrat National Convention, which is shows me that their party has uh, been taken over by, people would say a radical political element, but uh, to me they're just garden variety um, Satanists or snakes, if you will, but they, they worship you know, their God who demands human sacrifice. Uh, marriage defined as anything but marriage or sex defined as anything but sex that would lead to a birth. Um, that would demand that the, the human genome, plant genome, the genomes would be changed to better accommodate the uh, environment. But really, at the uh, end of the day, it's the perversion and death of everything God had established for uh, the power of the few while the lights are still on and before the whole thing goes out, which is called the Day of the Lord, Judgment of the Lord, which is basically the Day of the Lord um, also means the failure of man. Like a war, a world war would be a failure of man. A failure of man. So, and you could also liken that to the day of the Lord, especially if you have nukes and biological weapons and chemical weapons and weapons of mass destruction being perpetrated where millions and billions are dying, um, you know, you know uh, on a global basis. Uh, you know, this is being, and this is being heralded in behind the scenes by the social engineers who are depopulating the, the world for the purpose of ushering in this new Luciferian order. Um, and that's all it is. It's the Luciferian order, which would, and, and here's the, the odd thing. If you have a policy of give all your money away and uh, enforce, um, you know, forced um, uh gay marriage so that there are no offspring except, say, test tubes, and having, um, I mean, but that's a temporary right. I mean, all this leads to, obviously, the, the, uh, the elimination of all these things and, um, and this idea of on, ongoing uh, um, state-run murder of uh, <clears throat> fetuses. Uh, it doesn't take a genius to figure out if that's your, in other words, if your God is yourself, and, and basically when you say gay, mar gay marriage, you're just talking about gratifying the flesh. So uh, you don't want to have, um, there's no fidelity with God. In other words, God is out and enforced. Anyone seeking God is thrown in prison. We almost have, have a little bit of that going on right now. But basically, that's enforced godlessness which is what they've done in the Soviet Union and, and elsewhere where people were slaughtered for their faith and in China and whatnot. Now China has an official church of Jesus where they won't slaughter you, but if they find you, say, with a Bible and a fellowship and doing it for real and praying and stuff, they will. I mean, you know, it's, 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 uh, they don't have any fear from the uh, official state church because there's a legal uh, thing that says that Satan owns it so that it's, you know, the people are deluded and deceived thinking that they're worshiping when they're really just bowing down before their pile of poop and calling it God. And um, it's really more about conformity and churchianity and, you know, you know, singing Kumbaya and everyone doing the same thing and being on the same page. And that's what the state likes. So they're going to they're gonna use that for social control it worked for Adolf Hitler very well and um, which would make it the evilest institution actually on earth because it takes control of people's souls and minds and cancels their salvation in the name of Jesus you can't have it any better than that well they end up canceling their own salvation by their hearts you know in other words I'm with you guys I don't want to be with them or with the Christian the real Christians or with Jesus I want to work and have my family, and, and now you see that all these policies are pushing the entire civilization off the cliff, and now there is no security in the churches. 
There is no security in religions. There is no security in social clubs and networks. There is no security at your job. There is, there is one thing that I can tell you that is coming, and that is death and destruction due to what apparently looks like incompetence, but very cynically has all planned, and the real game is whether or not they're gonna checkmate God or not, as we spoke about yesterday. That's, that's the game they're playing. So Obama acts like a bumbling fool because he figures people will elect him anyway because they're bumbling fools themselves. In other words, they think Sharia law and gay rights are perfectly compatible with one another, for example. I mean, just as one small example of their consciousness and what they think about during the day. They think about, you know, obviously sex, uh, money and power, and that's all they think about all day long. There is nothing more deep to them. They don't sit and think about, you know, they don't torture themselves thinking about what's the right way to go and, you know, think about what, what you know, whether there is a God or not or even uh, what, what a proper philosophy for life is. They just go with their slogans and, um, you know, whatever's popular and they just run after that even if it means the destruction of the entire nation. The media doesn't care about that because none of them actually believe that they will be destroyed. And the thing is, is they will be destroyed en masse should a world war uh, emerge here, which some are trying fervently to get whipped up. That's why you see the coordination of all the things for the media, and the media just, the media has sold their soul, they're just lapdogs for, they don't, well they think they're gonna be the propagandists in the New World Order, so they think they're gonna have a job after the fall of civilization, but they're doing everything they can to usher in a complete financial collapse, and a collapse of the entire United States, which they hate with all their heart, soul, and mind, that would be all the mainstream media, <clears throat> they're not the lamestream media. They're, they're a very um, purposeful, organized, and, 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 and Luciferian, since, you know, vetted by secret societies and so forth. They have a, the, a very specific purpose to destroy um, any nation or nation states in the world, to destroy anything to do with God, and to bring about a new world order for their... The, the, the wealthy people that own the businesses that employ them because they are members of those secret societies that, they, that have decided that it's going to take a third world war to finally wipe out all the, the bad guys and the resistors so that we can finally get our way and be open with our religion, open with our lives, that we don't have to keep secrets anymore, that we can tell them, yes, we are your rulers. Yes, we have you know, a reptilian alien DNA. You know, yes, we are the gods that you need to worship. I mean, they really do want to come out and overtly have that kind of thing going on where you would have the gods in their, you wouldn't just have symbols of the gods and their architecture and their, you know, like uh, the, 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 uh, the um, shrine of Athena or, the, or, 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 or Apollo or, you know, they would actually be there, Athena and Apollo. You could actually go there and worship them. You know, just like in in the in, when you when we were kids, we used to watch the, uh, you know, the, the the Greek cartoons or whatever the you know the um, Greek mythology, and you you know have Zeus up there and all the different gods and Hercules, and they would have all their uh, you know, and that was all connected with their men and their Trojan War and their Trojan horses and their their, you know, mainly around war and empire and all that. And you've seen all the movies and seen all the probably the history books on it and everything and. And of course, of course, those civilizations all fell because all of that is Luciferianism. These, this idea of all these gods and you know gods you can worship. It's really not that you're worshiping those gods. It's that you're, you yourself want to be a god. And there's a path to godship for you. But you're bowing down to those icons around you that can help you get to where you want to go because you are God. And um, that's Satanism 101. And that's why all the architecture looks the way it does. 
and the gargoyles and the various things because the secret societies throughout time, from time immemorial, have had their, um, their science and their math and their um, technology and all the things they have and their connection to the stars, uh, which they've never lost. Um, you, you know, you go, wow, a UFO, now that's one of them. Yeah, and they'll be here tomorrow. Don't worry. <laughs> they'll be on television. <laughs> um, and so all that's going on, and, uh, and that's a lot of that is a, you know, it's a fantastic, a fantastic stretch, if you will, you know, to believe that they would fly around on uh, uh, spacecraft, and you know that all the aliens you see and everything is just them because they've had time travel for a long time. You yourself are actually back in time. And if you want me to get real sci-fi on you, I will. But what I just said is literally true. But I mean, I can't prove it. I just know it. Why I know it, I don't even know why I know it. But I just know that that's true. There's nothing I can really do about it. It's not going to help my life to uh, investigate it further. Um, suffice to say, this is there's nothing new under the sun, and certainly spaceships and um, you know seeing Egyptian hieroglyphics with uh, like 747 airplanes on it and things like that bleeding through in time and those kinds of anomalies. Uh, they've always had that capability. They, these are the remember these people have been kind of birthed and nurtured and brought up by the fallen angels who are the who had the on day one without they've always had um, 3D technology. There is no development. They you know spaceships are made really uh, as a, like a magical ritual with the mind. They're like mind ships. People that get caught up in trying to chase all that stuff down, the problem is, is that you're never really going to be satisfied. You're going to be like those bumbling idiots at MUFON. They keep trying to have their little meetings and they keep trying to, you know, the, the main thing they get out of it is friendship with others who seem desperate to find the truth. I will have one. Isn't that an awful sound? Uh, five o'clock in the morning, I'm off my game. It's a little late. Sorry. But the Lord would not let me not talk once again. And it's been a just a constant... Yeah, the first thing was the beans. The uh, machine I have by Breville believes that you should keep the beans fresh and they're airtight, and then when you uh, have a shot, you should grind it right before the shot, just the right amount, and then have it having been ground a few seconds before. And I do believe they are correct. Yeah. Yeah, so... Well, I can recommend it. It's, you know, I, I don't know. With me, it's kind of like... Well, acidic doesn't work for me of coffee. And um, that is good. Acidic doesn't work because, well, I researched this machine and actually it had mixed reviews. And, but I, of all them, I looked at all these machines because they tend to break after a couple of years. Um, so this was just sitting in a shop next to these like really expensive machines and, and it had it's it's i don't know what model it is it has a little uh, pressure gauge on the front it grinds beans and you can also do the espresso but it was really well made like their juicer is and um you know, like everything they make seems to be so i thought okay we'll give it a whirl we'll see and then there's like a little cleaning light that comes on where you put a little pill in, in the in the um the, the, the handle, the thing that you get the coffee from, and then it cleans all that, and it cleans itself, and then the light goes off. So it's fairly sophisticated, but it's, it's not automatic. You still have to some, have some skill to use it. Um, it's not like you push a button and it will do everything for you, but it's, uh, put it this way, it's a better shot than Starbucks, and that's a place I really don't want to go, and probably by now, uh, this thing's paid for itself. 
Um, I don't really have, I haven't really delved into the cap. It can do steep milk and all that, but I, I don't really delve into that because uh, maybe I should. Um, but uh, it'll do that. Usually, it. What I like is if I'm going to do something with a with a with a couple of with a say a large espresso or you know double shot of espresso or something, you just put whip, whipped cream on it. Every, I mean, every not every day, but every once in a while with maybe a little bit of uh, you can do homemade whipped cream with a little stevia, so it's no sugar. Then it's 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 really uh, kind of a treat. But I don't really feel a need for that too often. So it's the the steamer thing is not that important. But yeah, they have coffee machines now, so I can tell it's the end of civilization. They have a coffee machine where you just literally push one button, tell it what you want, like a cappuccino or a, you want a uh, a macchiato or a, a, a this or a that, whatever it is, you want it in a tall glass, like a like a dessert glass, or you want it in a short. And you tell it this stuff, and it's it's like a computer, and it, you push a button, and it'll grind, it'll make the shot, it'll add the milk, cream, um, steam milk, steam cream, whatever it is you're going to put in there, and uh, deliver you this this uh, this perfect thing it's almost like uh, well the age of robotics is here well what's next uh mates i suppose if we kept going peacefully uh we could just order up a mate huh you could you could order up uh, those of you who are single you could just order up exactly the the robot that would suit you it would be almost human in every way like a cyborg and um all your troubles would be solved but see that's that future of the rise of the cyborgs and computers running our lives, that future has been nixed. You see that? That's what they were predicting. Lots of sci-fi writers and stuff that it would it would become like the Jetsons or something. You know, it's been nixed. No, the future that they're throwing at you is back to the Stone Age. More like the movie Thunderdome, a post-apocalyptic vision, or Mad Max. And, um, well, they intend to be the ones who clean all that up and start again, but they're not going to get that chance. It's really what you're looking at is the earth to be cleansed for the, the making of the way of God and his people to be established on the earth through a supernatural resurrection and a supernatural um, uh, gifting of, of uh, supernature. I mean, uh, bodies that are incorruptible and, you know, some that would live you know, all, all these years that, that there would be a certain, certain um, thing that would happen with the earth that would cause people to enter into an eternal state, an eternal dimension and live. And, uh, uh, you know, that the, when the return of Christ is really ultimately the Christ is, it's all of us and God together, you know, it, it's, it's, uh, I'm not saying he's not going to be back in the flesh, but you see, people have a very limited view of what the return of Christ is. It's it's not just, it's cosmological, it's dimensional, it's transformational for any individual. You know, in other words, you'd be transformed and in, 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 in changed to a incorruptible uh, being that is, that has no limitation. It is um, not just a utopia, but a, uh, it's not really a theocracy. It's just, it's just a different world. It, it actually would be the opposite of the new world order. And um, you now Jesus rules with a rod of iron. Well, a rod of iron, to rule with a rod of iron from a single place would mean that the person of Jesus would have to be within each person. And that would be the rule with a rod of iron. You see what I mean? Otherwise, it's subject-object again, like there's this guy there telling you what to do and not do, and it wouldn't be like that. You will do and not do automatically, perfectly, because Christ in you, uh, that's the rod of iron. Well, that's my interpretation, and if you want to have a comic book uh, type of thing or a storybook thing like you when you were kids, that's fine. It's, either way, you get to the same place. It's actually easier for people to look at it in a linear way the, the disappointment comes for them when they lose their faith because things don't happen on cue. Things don't happen 
Love the way they, they studied it out and they reasoned it out. And, and so this is the timeline. God's got to fit to that. And it's like, no way. You, you have no idea who I am. You have no idea what I am. You have no idea what time is and what it is not. You have no idea what your scriptures say and what they don't say. You're blind little babies wandering around in circles and we're trying to get you not to kill each other in the sandbox, period. Got it? You will know all these things down the road. All the scriptures will be fulfilled and not one of them the way you think. Well, there's already been some brothers. Okay, well, save for the ones that have been fulfilled that you say are fulfilled. That you have historical evidence. Darn it, I need something concrete and so I can see it. And then I'll say it's fulfilled and then I'll be God. Oh, you don't realize when you assert yourself in that way, that way you're playing, you are God. God has to take a back seat to you. Every time we do that, a much better attitude would be, you know, wondering about it and, and, and being like a child and, and not being afraid to be wrong. Wouldn't that be nice for a change? It's not going to happen. The experts, they, uh, they've invested all their money and all their time into being famous and going on the radio and on TV and telling you all about Jesus and getting control of you. Jesus laughs at them uh, because he knows that the minute one of us does something like that, we then become the evil that we, that we rail against. We become at least, at the very least, hypocrites, at the very most, murderers. We murder the truth and then people get killed anyway because of our lies. But we keep on with it. And it's, it's not, you know, I don't think it could be helped, okay? We keep on with it not because we're better people and should know better. We keep on with it because we're not better people and we don't know better. And that, you know, if you adopt that attitude, you will give your fellow man a little slack. He, he you, us, we don't know any better. You know, we lose our way daily. I've dealt with all kinds of people here at this, you know, uh, unfolding kind of ministry and sound, the sound of the word of God out loud and, and music and different things that we've been doing completely in the wilderness. But I mean, what I've, what I've been dealing with, I've dealt with the Bible experts, I've dealt with, with the gang stalking reality of, um, which is a satanic reality. And I tried to make those connections so that people understand that everything you're really dealing with <clears throat> is beyond your ability to control, you're beyond your ability to, to manage. So for example, gang stalking, I've dealt with a lot of TIs. They call, they call themselves TIs. I don't call myself a TI, but other people do call me a TI. They just say I'm in denial, like Dr. John Hall, I'm sure he thinks I'm in denial because um, when I said I had some voice to skull thing going on uh, with the Navy fight song, he confirmed that all these other people had it on that same day, working it back to 2004, the summer of. And, um, but then it went away, you know, and it's, it's like, oh, it'll be back. You're not getting out of here. I'm like, no, I, I believe I did pray about it and then I don't hear it. And even if I did hear it, I wouldn't listen to it. Just like if I heard a voice saying, I am God. It's like God doesn't speak to me through a, a voice in my head, a voice to skull transmission of this is what you must say and do. I'm not saying that there aren't attempts at that because the enemy always has access to your mind, whether it's through a microwave thing or technology or through the spirit. But it doesn't mean I have to fight off all kinds of things and that I, I might say a word that I thought was inspired by the Lord and then it just doesn't wind up online and I look back on it and I say, well, I guess it wasn't real then. Because uh, I'm completely uh, incapable of assessing my own work. I'm completely incapable <clears throat> of assessing what needs to be, uh, incapable of, um, of, uh, of uh, judging this or even other people's. 
I'm completely incapable of discernment on my own. The kind of discernment that I get is where something doesn't happen and then months later I come to the conclusion that I guess it didn't happen because the Lord intervened because it wasn't the right thing and no analysis, no discernment about a thing, no scriptural analysis. It's just, okay, you were going down this path and you got yanked out and moved over there and a few months later you can look back and say, oh, I guess I was off the track and then, and then let it go at that. And, and that's as deep as the analysis goes. And the reason I'm not aware of being yanked around is because the Lord knows if I wasn't yanked around that it would be completely inaccurate. And that he knows that um, left to my own devices, I would just start blaspheming. I would just, I would just go down the path and say everything that, it, you know, anything and everything uh, without any um, direction of the Holy Spirit and think it's mana. You know, I mean, I can't trust myself. So I have to constantly pray, Lord, don't let me go with a bad word. I mean, whatever the people, you know, yes, Lord, I hear you, I'm up, I'm here. Uh, you tell me what to tell them. And it, it's, it's kind of like, and does he tell me in my ear? No, not necessarily, no. It's just very mysterious how he would tell me to tell you something. And in fact, it's, I can't even follow it, how it happens. It's, it's beyond comprehension. But it's not some stupid voice to skull thing. It's not some uh, whispering in my ear or some voice in my head. It's not, um, some people say, well, there's that still small voice or that small thought you have, kind of like I always fashion that to be in the solar plexus. And it's like, well, no, not necessarily that either. It's, I'm, I'm aware that there's some divine presence that is got this thing handled so I don't have to worry. It's more like that. <laughs> You know what I mean? And that I'm going to do and say what's been, what's been preordained for me to do and say from the future because we're not in the future yet. We're in the past. So whatever I've been programmed to do in that regard and not do is kind of, um, you know, I'm aware that there's some mechanism there for, of control. I'm not saying it's a mind control thing. I'm just saying that so many times I'll do something or say something or say with one of these words and then later on it will seem like it was scripted and it will seem like it was guided by something in the future. And in other words, it was inevitable that I would give it. And the words said were the words that were scripted to be said and nothing was impromptu or I like to make it very casual as we sneak up on a, a piece of Rima or a piece of uh, Rema or um, truth or a prophecy or something that, that it just hits us all at the same time, that it's not some planned thing. And I think, you know, there's a place for that. If you want the other, there's plenty of people that do show prep and um, they, they're all ready to go with their, and they'll call it Rima and prophecy and whatnot. And they'll, you know, and people will be fed by that too. I, uh, hearing the scriptures read, I'm fed. I, I'm amazed that we found this first chapter of Joel since I very rarely hear it. And how many specific things it named. Um, you know, like just this scripture that I didn't read, now I am going to read. Awake you drunkards and weep and howl, all you drinkers of wine because of the new wine, for it is cut off from your mouth. <laughs> I know. They always read Joel too, but they never bother with that chapter. I, and, and that would bother you because, you, you know, um, it's the curse of the fathers visited upon the sons and the day of the Lord is a day of wrath and it's a day of wrath that um, basically means the failure of man. And so therefore we need, need to go to war. Now, some years ago I told you no one is worth a billion dollars. No soul, no individual person. Um, if, you're, uh, if there's a million dollar thing happening and you're in the way, you'll be taken out. It just, it's kind of like, I, I can't explain it, it's just like a law of the land. It, it happens, it, it, there's no rhyme or reason to how it happens at times, but when people are in the way of money going to other people, they tend to be killed. If you run up a debt and you can't pay, then you know you have to pay in blood, sacrificing one of your children, 
or giving them over to slavery or you know whatever thing has to be it, it has to be it will be paid it won't be forgiven if a nation uh, runs up so much debt they can't pay it and they're bankrupt and the leaders did it on purpose to do it in their name so that they could end up slaughtering them which is a very cynical way to look at the Obama administration but if you have a vendetta against a people the best thing to do is sit there and say you're going to solve all their problems, then run the debt up so no one can pay, and then make sure that World War III happens because the money's all been spent and there is no money anywhere, so I guess we go to war. But the reason we go to war is always because of a debt that can't be paid, so it must be paid in blood. Uh, the, the, the Luciferians know this and will run up the debt on purpose so that there would be a payment in blood. I pause right there so you can consider the gravity of that situation. It always comes down to a debt and a debt that can't be paid. When the United States cannot pay its debts, then you, you know, make no mistake about it, there will be invasion and there will be blood. And there already has been. And, and you know, ultimately their plan, as I said, to depopulate you know, let's just say between, like I said, between 66 and two-thirds and 90. So that covers all you know, various people. The only way they can clear 66 and two-thirds percent of the earth to 90 percent would be if the economic situation was destroyed and the people are without any means of taking care of themselves. You know, in other words, they are desperate. That's how they got all the people to riot in the Middle East. It's not because they're just mad that you insult Mohammed or whatever. It's because there's no money. These people don't have jobs. These people can't feed their kids. These people have, were told that if they threw out Mubarak in Egypt, they would have money. They would be a new day. If they elected Obama in America, their health care would be paid for and they, their mortgages would be forgiven. You know, they really, these dupes really believed all that. What happened is that Egypt wound up bankrupt. Libya wound up bankrupt. Tunisia and all these other countries are bankrupt. They're all dependent upon the United States, and the United States is bankrupt. And when it gets to that point, we need World War III to clear the books. It's, it's really an accounting issue. I, maybe it's hard for you to see the connection between war and debt. But I promise you, if you just trust me for a second, I promise you that's the mechanism at work, and there is no other. I mean, there is, you know, a spiritual battle and all that, but I mean, if you want a concrete scientific mechanism that's involved, it's, I'm telling you, and you just, just suspend, just kind of agree to look into it, you know, let, let it sit there for a while, that debt brings about war, and the only way they could get a world war is to, is, you know, through these, um, the financial crisis, the derivatives, all the things that have happened have forced them to take out so much money in your name, you and I cannot pay back the debt of this country. And Obama has been very successful in the goal that he had, which is to run the debt up and to overwhelm, which is like Solinsky 101, to overwhelm the system with debt that can't be repaid so it forces about the new world order and the people are put in chains. He, look at the, the things that he's accomplished. He destroyed the middle class. He caused the, um, the uprising of uh, the, the radical Islam that would be the uh, hammer to get about their new world order. He's done, a, he, he's done many, many things for his people that he promised to do and he's delivered on. He, de he promised to destroy the United States of America and destroy the people, you know, to put them in bondage and to destroy the middle class. And he's done that beautifully. You know, and a little help from Bush also, but I mean, between the two of them, they have done, they have destroyed the middle class. The middle class will never come back. Uh, I mean, I'm, if nothing changes, but you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to play God and put things in stone here. But I will say this, that um, they, goal was to destroy the middle class and they did. They destroyed God in America. That was their goal. They even have no God in the in the platform of one of the political parties. I know they, they kind of tried to throw it out, but the people there booed that and they didn't listen because they didn't want it to look so, they didn't want to alienate people from voting for them. 
but they got rid of God. They enshrined, um, you know, the gay marriage thing, which was the basically the tabling of that symbolically what that means is uh, the overturning of God's word and God's law, period, throughout the whole earth, done at the expense of gays. And I know gays don't really feel like they're responsible for bringing about the destruction of the world and, and all. They don't understand... Um, I guess what they don't understand is the power vacuum that... Well, I won't even go into it um, because most of them are just scapegoats, not scapegoats, but what do you call them? Straw men or... Um, they don't realize they're being used to... You know, there's, they're, they're being used. The, the, the Supreme Court's being used. The various... Yeah, Judge Roberts and his uh, uh, upholding Obama tax. That was all about, um, you know, they have stuff on him. And he's a member of their secret societies, and he had to take one for the team, and he had to do it. Uh, you know, otherwise, him, he would be threatened, his children, his grandchildren, or anyone in his family, uh, if he didn't do what he did, would be, um, you know, their head could roll. So, of course, he's going to uh, find a way and torture, with tortured logic, to make the, that thing fly, because he knows, and they know, that by over, over, Overwhelming the system with debt and then overtaxing the people uh, and chasing away industry. The only one left to control you is the government who will not give you anything. And uh, on that day, the food stamps would end. The, the whole purpose of it is control. At, and, but ultimately, what the lower people don't, you know, this is a lower kind of way of thinking. I'm just the way I'm describing it now. The higher way of thinking is. I want the heads of every American and we want them to roll. You see what I mean? We want that sacrifice. And that will pay for, you know, that will start the uh, ball rolling toward the new world order. And that's, you know, unfortunately, um, that's the way they think about everything. Everything has a price. Everything is a commodity. And so that's what's going on. And then maybe that's what prompted me to say what I said yesterday or two days ago or whatever. Perhaps, uh, it was my coming into that understanding or seeing the big picture for a second of what this is really all about. And the big picture is, um, you know, and, and when we look at the book of Revelation, it's like, yeah, but Brother Z, the mark of the beast hasn't happened yet. Well, it's happened in so many ways. I mean, um, but the, 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 that there would be a tattoo on you that would that you'd have to have or you wouldn't buy and sell. And, and also you have to worship the, the beast in his image uh, or you'll be killed. Um, so I guess... That overt prophecy hasn't happened exactly in that way, but in a more clandestine manner, it's kind of true. For example, you don't conform, you're not going to work. Okay? And so you could say in the Bible, any, and conforming means worship of the beast. So, so you could say in the Bible, um, oh, but then, you know, it's not done overtly. It's not like, you know, someone's going to catch you and say, hey, I saw you were worshiping the beast. No, no, it's just, ba it's just basically conformity. So if you have that, you'd say, well, then that fulfills uh, Revelation 13 completely, and it's been fulfilled for a long time. And I'd say, see, there you go. That's right. As far as the technology of some sort of marker tattoo or whatever, um, all this technology is ready to go. It's just waiting for another crisis. And the people in this country... Um, now are blind and lost. Um, so they will do whatever they're told at this point. And they're not going to fight back. And they, they, that's what they wanted. They wanted to break the, the back of the human will. And, uh, you know, and promise. Hey, will there be people in the end after this is all um, just a wasteland? Will there be people that said, you know, I, I was really for that... Um, that plank of the DNC, and I hated all you, and I wanted all you dead, and you know, and now I realize I was taken over by a spirit, and that I was deluded, and I was ignorant, and I and I apologize. Don't hold your breath. You're dealing with a spiritual sickness in these people, and most of them are dead. They, you know, they're walking around. You know, in 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 entertainment and sports and whatnot, a lot of these people are dead. You know that that's the price for them to be millionaires and billionaires and, 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 and masters of the universe. 
You know, that nobody really, when they say no one gets there on their own, it's like, hallelujah, you, you, that, you spoke that right. Nobody gets there on their own. Into the limelight, that is. Um, some point along the way, they're going to want something from you, which is tantamount to or equals your life. It's like, you know, that's the, you're prepaying that debt of what you would have for being famous. So that's been in existence um, pretty much from the beginning. And it's run by the fallen angels and the, you know, the, the bigger spiritual battle between the angels and between the forces of good and evil and all those things. Um, they would, they dictated all this system. I, it's got nothing to do with me. I, I, I absolutely eschew it. Um, I'll just say what I said when I was a kid on that shouldn't be there. Indeed, it isn't there overtly. What they want to do is bring it into view overtly. So there is overt worship in the square of say Satan and death and putting these people to death and I don't know, whatever else. Kind of like uh, the stand. Remember the stand where Vegas was the was where Satan was, and they were just drawing and quartering people they didn't like. <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah, yeah, that's the kind of thing secretly they think they're going to be able to get, and they're going to hang in with Obama, and they're going to hang in with the left, thinking that in the end they're going to be the people. You know, just like the the kids in China were able to kill their parents, it's going to be you know they're going to have their shot at revenge. Little do they know, it's not their vengeance. It's the one who operates them. It's his vengeance. They're acting on his behalf and they will do his bidding. They don't, as people, they don't really exist. I can't, you couldn't say that's a real person. You could say that's a, that's a, a deluded, ignorant person, but you know, there's a point of no return. When you get to a certain point of no return, spiritually, you're not who you were. You know, you've been given um, a certain amount of, um, a certain sense of security, let's say, that you're, you'll be taken care of because you, you know, you took one for the team. You know, you, 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 uh, you gave your life for the group, but what the group did was give their lives for the success of Satan in destroying the world. Satan doesn't have a goal of having a new world order. <laughs> Their gods and the spirits they contact, they don't have a goal like that. You see, the really wise one in the Illuminati, he knows that what I'm saying is correct. There is no goal. There is no new world order. It, there never was. All of this is a ruse to get people to behave a certain way and to destroy themselves, period. And I think all of you can, I don't care what side of the political or religious fence you're on, I think if you really think about it soberly right now, I think you all would agree with me on that. There is no secret. There never was a secret. There is no secret thing that you can go through all the degrees and finally learn the secret because the secret is there is no secret. What they know is what I know. Without, on our own, we are effed. I say it that way hoping that if Frankie wants to put this on the air, uh, I'm trying not to say those words that would be egregious to the uh, FCC. But anyway, um, it's really pretty sobering when you think about it. That there is no, you won't hear Alex Jones or, you know, the rest of them, you know, the clones talking about this because the point I'm at, it would cancel all those shows they would become irrelevant if this true statement really got known and taken to heart, that there is no secret. There is no promised land for them. There is no Valhalla. There is no 
um, whatever the other, what are some of the uh, fantasy things? Xanadu, there is no, <laughs> there is no promised land. And let me qualify that by saying there is no promised land outside God because God is the promised land, but they don't want that. So what I'm, people I'm talking about are those who <clears throat> rejected God and went on their own a long time ago and forced everyone else to if they want, because they were given the keys of industry. And so they could make it a, you know, and they set up universities and the, the, the degree system is a vetting system. But during the time you get a degree and you have an advisor, that they, they will, you will not be successful in academia unless you bow, it's somewhere along the line you have to bow down. You have to take the same mark that everybody else does. And, um, you know, this is something they don't want. They, they set up the universities, like I said. They set up the institutions of religion. They set up the seminaries. They set this whole thing up. There's not one thing here that isn't corrupt in that way. Not one thing. All the structures that you see, they set up. And did so um, for the purpose of, you know, deceiving the nations or whatever, for their power, you know, that they, that they, they run the vetting system. In other words, you want to be a doctor, you got to jump through these hoops. And uh, depending on how um, well you do it and how, how well you please your masters, they will allow you to have a practice. And that's not um, the spirit of, of America, is it? And when this sickness called Babylon gets to be so pervasive that every soul is lost, what happens is the civilization crumbles and usually you have a clash between two civilizations. For example, the Greeks and the Romans and, and, and the Greeks lost ultimately. Or Islam, Islam and, and the Judeo-Christian West, uh, that, that's another clash that's waiting to come. Call that World War III, but that clash is going on right now. I think from what you're seeing on the news, you're now realizing what kind of world you live in and what the leaders here in America have done to you because they don't care about you. They don't owe you anything. They're answering to other people who want this thing toast, that is America, <clears throat> as a sacrifice for their God, figuring that that will boost them all the more. And the whole goal of all this boosting is so that they will learn the secret of which, you know, the, of immortality, of the stars, being masters of the universe and never dying. You know, that's the secret they're after. And they feel if they can be good enough and obedient enough and do what they're told and deliver your head on a platter, that somehow they will be rewarded. Now, it doesn't take a genius to figure out you know, that they will not be rewarded. But if you look at, you know, we might as well look at Revelation 19. I mean, we might as well look to the apocalypse, yes? Because that's what we're in right now. So, Revelation 19. I like to refer to it quite often these days because people seem to not focus on this part of it, and I don't know why that is. Look, after all these things, I heard a great voice of much people in heaven saying, Alleluia, salvation, the glory and honor and power under the Lord our God for true and righteous are his judgments for he hath judged the great whore. Okay, so she's been taken care of, which did corrupt the earth, the whole earth, as I, proving exactly what I just said. What I just said, if you want scriptural basis, it's Revelation 19.2. Okay, I, I like doing that, you know. It's just when it gets carried away and you say, oh, see, this justifies that, this justifies Once you get carried away with it, then you're gonna be false. Which did corrupt the earth with her fornication and hath avenged, her fornication meaning uh, spiritual ritual and dedication and oaths to her and hath avenged the blood of his servants at her hand. So the Lord is avenged by taking her down. He is avenged the blood spilled from the beginning of time of all the ones trying to say the truth who were punished for it, like the prophets, and but all the other people, all the other people that followed in the same footsteps as those prophets that are famous, they too paid. And anyone that says the truth pays. 
And again, they said, Alleluia, and her smoke rose up forever and ever. So she and those in her are conscious of their punishment forever and ever is what that means. Okay, so now we move on down. And the four and 20 elders and the four beasts fell down and worshiped God that sat on the throne saying, Amen, Amen, Alleluia. And the voice came out of the throne saying, Praise our God. And all ye servants and you that fear him, both small and great. So these people are, you know, alive. They're in this dimension. They're in another dimension. They're, they're the angels. They're, they're the, the whole group of all the beings that, and, and the creatures and the, and the different kinds of creatures around God. All these beings are in one, one accord because this voice is coming from the throne, which means we're all in one accord. As I heard, as it were, a voice of a great multitude and the voice of many waters, and as the voice of many thundering, saying, Alleluia, for the Lord God omnipotent reigns. Was there ever any doubt, folks? He's omnipotent. There's nothing above God, and he has his hand on everything at all times, in all places, and forever. Back, forth, up, down, you name it. Yes, they're going to have their, o, their OS moment. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb has come. That is the uniting of all. And his wife have made herself ready. That is the body of Christ, but this is the body of believers. These are the people of God from the beginning of time on and forever. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. And, and he says to me, see, at one point, if you overcome, even you can be, you know, all the saints doesn't mean they're not sinners, but at some point, their sainthood, that is the refusal, the being a saint in this context, in this, in this, in the apocalypse, means you don't deny Jesus, even unto your death. And the reward for that is, um, is the, the marriage of the of the Lamb. In other words, now you be, become consummated with God, hence as God. Not God, but as God. In the likeness and image, you know, that fulfillment in the beginning in the book of Genesis becomes fulfilled. And he saith unto me, right, blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he saith unto me, these are the true sayings of God. And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said, and he said, do it not. I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren uh, uh, and, and have testimony of Jesus. Worship God for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Okay, so this this is all the good stuff. Okay, this is all the good. This is all the the, the the you know setting the table. I mean, the feast, the consummation, the 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 reward of the saints is to be delivered into eternal into the eternal realm and do eternal perfect. When you say the marriage supper of the Lamb, what that really means is the setting free of these people, and they are adorned and perfected and and in fine linen. You know, not just acquitted but adorned as eternal beings. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. <clears throat> well, no, I'll back up. I'll read the whole thing. And I fell at his feet to worship him. Um, that's John, speaking in the first person. And he said unto me, See thou do it not, for I am thy fellow servant, said the angel. And um, of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus, worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True, capital of F and T, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. Yes, war is a big part of God. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. I told you Jesus had, you know, the real identity of the, the true son of God has many names that and some can't be uttered. And it's really the, the name of God and us and heaven all together as one. And it's, um, but there is a clue here. And he was clothed with a, with his, with a vesture dipped in blood and his name is called the word of God. Well, we know that the word of God, the word became flesh. That's the identity of Jesus. He's the word of God. We all know that the word of God is what brought into creation all that is created. John 1, all that is created was created by him and the world knew him not, remember? So he is the word of God. His true identity, therefore, is God. Amen. 
And the ar- <laughs> there is no argument. There's people that try to make that argument are, are hopelessly lost. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon one. Well, I got to stop right now. Someone told me, you know, this guy was seeing this kind of alternative doctrine. He was a Taoist, you know. And, and he, so therefore he followed the teachings of Lao Tzu, which are very wise teachings. He said, and he had me on the table, and he was running this machine, a rife machine, and I was really getting me kind of worn out, and he was doing acupuncture, and I was really pretty uncomfortable. And in that weakened state, he goes, you know, who do you think said this? And he made a statement, and he goes, you know, Lao Tzu said that 500 years before Jesus. And he really wanted to make it adamant. And I'm like, and the answer to that is, of course, Jesus created Lao Tzu, end of story. And Jesus gave Lao Tzu that rima. If there is anything wise or true, God gave it to him. But I couldn't tell him that because he was so angry too. It was just demonic. You know, he's like a nice guy, and then he turned into this like demon. You know, just pounding the table that his guy said at five hundred. So therefore, my belief in he was just attacking my faith. So well, I haven't been back. No, and I don't intend to go back either. And the armies in heaven which followed him upon white horses clothed in fine white linen, okay? Armies which were in heaven. We could do a whole talk about that. There are armies in heaven. The war is in heaven. The war is coming to the earth and already come to the earth. And that what you see are pawns playing out the bigger spiritual battle behind the scenes. And lots of people are dying, yes. And out of the mouth go off a sharp sword. And with it, he should smite, what? The nations, that's World War III. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and the wrath of the Almighty God. In other words, God's people and God's thing and God's name is alive and well during the huge war between nations. And he hath on his vesture, well, when it says that he's going to make more war with the nations, what that means is these nations can't get what they want by waging war. Something stops them. Yeah, because they've already been slain by him who, who, who created them in the first place. Then another name comes forth and on his vesture and on the thigh is a name written King of Kings and Lord of Lords. So that's the identity of God. And I saw an angel standing in the sun. I always like that image. An angel standing in the sun in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice. So that's a long way away, being standing in the sun. Uh, maybe, you know, so I'm, I'm envisioning a bright glowing sunlight, a bright glowing orb or something that is as bright as the sun, and an angel coming forth in the midst, uh, saying, in all, all, saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God. And here's the chapter they seem to forget that you may eat the flesh of kings and the flesh of captains and the flesh of mighty men and the flesh of horses and the flesh of them that sit on them and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and, uh, and against his army. Army, just remember that, army. And the great... And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into the lake of fire, burning with brimstone, and the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, which sword proceeded out of the mouth, and all the fowls were filled with their flesh. A uh, remnant in this case means the remnant of those people. In other words, not just the kings, I told you this before, but I'm, I'm doing it scripturally. The, not, only the cap, not only the people that pervade this system and the heads of the universities and all the heads of the media and everybody that perpetrated this lie upon the earth and upon the people, but everyone that served it. In other words, all the people who conform to that reality are slain by God. I have been saying this for, do you know I can't get a Christian pastor to agree with me on this? 
I mean, I, I'm, I can get some pastors that are kind of in the wilderness, but I mean, you know, a mainstream seminary based that, that I can, you can just read the word of God. They just are blind. Deaf. How would you like to sit in a, I, I could never sit in their sermons because they were so boring. I just fell asleep. And then the next thing that happens in Revelation 20 is that Satan is, is bound. Um, and it says here a thousand years. And, you know, then it goes on from there. And uh, there, there's some movements of the drama of the story where he's there a thousand years and then they let him out. And, you know, then, they, then, it, then, then basically he gets to run around for a while and then, then they're thrown back in and then there's this new heaven and new earth because Jesus, another name of Jesus is, I make all things new. That's another name he has. That's why when you become a believer in Jesus Christ, you are made new. You know, not in the image of the church, which is the beast, but made new in, in the image of Christ. And if, you, if that's really happened in your life, then the official religions of the world will reject you. And if they don't reject you, if they welcome you, then, you don't ha then you're not born again. I mean, it's just really that simple. I know that's so hard for those people that are in the system to really hear that. And what I'm here to tell you, don't look at me. I'm just a messenger here. The point is, and this was the point the other day, you need to get squared away with your God. It's not a collect, there's no collective salvation in your group or fellowship group. God is gonna deal with each one of you individually. So individually, you need to make your deal, cut your deal with Jesus. And, you know, I, the, it's really up to him at that point, whether he's gonna deliver you. And deliverance means to, in this case, to separate you from the sinking ship or not. But we all know it's sinking now, right? We all see that what I've said for the last 10 years has come due and is true. It is literally just basic truth that, again, it's an embarrassment to have to even sit here and speak on something children understand. People would come back, come on, have a little compassion on us, will you? And, and I'm like, what, me? What do I, I have nothing to do with it. I have nothing to do with you. I have nothing to do with this situation. I'm just, it's not about me. It's not about my opinion. Just a messenger. Just a message called the truth that will set you free should you heed to it. Don't put me in your equation. I think that's why the Lord keeps me obscure and out of the limelight because, you know, this is, you're supposed to just hear this and not regard me in any way, shape, or form. Me has nothing to do with it. There is no me anyway. There's no you, there's no me. There's, there's just God and what he's going to do. And it's, the, the, the only me there is is to, to, to choose whom I will serve. And that's about all I have to, that, that's about it. And that's really just a test of faith and to be tested and tried. And you know what all, everyone goes through. The, 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 the test of Job. And you know, the restoration of Job is, is a picture of the, uh, the wedding of the lamb and the bride. And that's, that's the true restoration. And um, I don't know how much more simple it is. If, if you die, and there's going to be a lot of death. So if you die, outside the position, you know, it's, it's the same story of the wedding garment. If you don't have the right wedding garment to come to the wedding, um, the Bible says you're cast out in the outer darkness. It doesn't matter whether you're a good guy, how much you give, if you come dressed wrong, you're tossed out. It's not a personal issue of like how much we like you, how much you did, how much you've done, how much charity work you've done. None of those things matter. It's whether you have the garment on or not. And I've tried to explain this for 10 years too. It's not a personal issue, it's a legal matter. And I will pound the table on it again. It's a legal issue. If you're found, or another metaphor, the, the five unwise, foolish virgins 
who let their lamp oil run out. So when the Savior came, they weren't ready and they couldn't go with him because they 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 couldn't light their way to the to the Lord. So um, they they didn't wait every day on the the Lord's return. And so they were um, they blew it. They may have been just as nice as the five wise virgins. And they might have done the same charity work and the same caring about their fellow man and loving their children and everything else. Well, they couldn't love their children, they're virgins, but, (laughs) you know, their families or whatever. Um, They could have taken care of orphans, you know, there could have been a lot of things they've done. But the ones who were ready with the lamp oil, you know, being similar to the other ones, except that they kept the lamp oil, they're the ones that went. So it's really more of a legal issue. God is no respecter of persons, and if you really knew God like the way I've seen aspects of God, it's, 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 it's dread, it's dread, it's hard to look, it's, you can't. But it's not personal. I mean, there's a personal relationship we have with Jesus and with like a father figure, and we'd say daddy, and you know, it kind of reminds us of, of our parents, and you know, it's kind of, can be that feeling, but that's not, a, that, that's there kind of like as a, as, as a, um, you know, having a little baby carriage for you to ride around in, you know, to, it, you know, at some point you'll see that you're supposed to walk. And when you're emancipated, you don't need it to be daddy and mommy and all that. There is not, none of that exists. You, you have grown up then, but you can't grow up until after death here. You know, in other words, the, the real birth, the real beginning of life is after this life. I don't know why that is. Uh, it's a harsh thing to say, again. But most of the people that you see in the book of Revelation, the multitude and so forth, they're coming from after death to the earth. Because <laughs> the earth needs to be repopulated. <laughs> Cause, right? Because it's been pretty much slain. I know, it's, it, it's really a kicker at the end of Revelation 19 and then going into 20 where you have, um, you know, the, the, the dragon and a thousand years of Jesus' reign. And a lot of people like to think that's really just the literal physical Jesus coming here to be king. And then eventually we all um, are transformed into a new heaven, new earth, being a new dimension uh, where we are Christ. I mean... You can look at it that way, that it's an emancipation thing from having a physical object to no need for a physical object again, you know, that um, we sit on the throne at the right hand of the Father as one, John 17. And that's hard for people to get because that that tends to, to make us all one in the spirit, that there's no differentiation. I'm like, yeah, when people are ready to grow up to that level, then they'll that will be presented to them. When you're ready to say, it's not about me, it's all about him. And there's really no difference between, you know, whatever I see, whatever I'm presented with on a daily basis here, it's not about me and it's about him and, you know, what I will do. And, and the only thing I can do is try to yield to the spirit and, and to do the bidding of the one who sent me, in the, who created me in the first place. But ultimately, I, you know, me and my brethren and, and the angels and the creatures and the throne of God and everything around the throne, the elders, and that, that we are, there is no hierarchy. We are just one. And I know, I, I know that there are a lot of pastors who like to totally disagree with that and say that, you know, you, you get your crown based on the things you do here and that'll determine your crown. I'm saying, friend, there is no, that's, that's just, that's a metaphor to help you to, 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 to do better in your life. But you know, just like we tell children stories about Santa Claus, there is no crown. And then, you know, when you're really cool, you throw your crown because we really don't need a crown. My proof on that is that the elders throw their crowns at the throne because obviously the crown is irrelevant because there is no crown. There is no crown. There is no secret. When you are one, whether you sit on the throne, Jesus sits on the throne, there's no difference. It's just one thing. God sits on the throne. It's all one. And at that point, you're thinking, shoot, that's, that's what heaven is? That doesn't sound very good. It's like, no, you, would, you probably wouldn't like it. You'd probably want to stay here hoping to win the drama. 
In the end, everybody dies. That's the end. There is no winning of the drama. It's Shakespeare came closest in Hamlet. Everyone runs each other through with a sword. That's the end of this story. That's why we're talking about death. Friends, the money's run out. A lot of these people think they're going to hide with their gold in the hills. I got news for you. On the day of the Lord, on the day of death, whether you're a pauper or fabulously rich, and I have no grudge against rich, a lot of Christians do. But on that day, whether you have or you don't, you're equal in death. Whether you were considered a fool or wise, both of you are equal in death. Whether you're a Democrat or a Republican, you're equal in death. All the grudges you have, all the contests you have, all the uh, uh, differentiation you have between you and them and us and them, on the day of death, there is no us and them. There may be a different result, but like I said, in the end, all is one anyway. You see what I mean? But God expects you to, to, to be true to yourself and to live out your life and to battle and do what you do in this great apocalypse. That your desires will be fulfilled to be with the Lord and to, to be um, made new. And you'll be conscious of that just like they will be conscious of being uh, the smoke of her torment rises up forever and ever. Meaning, and let me just translate that, you know, to something I think you all agree with. What that means is that there is a, a memory or a, 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 that means there's consciousness of being tortured forever and ever. There, there's, these people are conscious of the punishment, but that can't be the forever state. Forever and ever doesn't mean eternity. I mean, eternity meaning infinity. It doesn't mean that. It's a, I don't know how long the period is, but at some point, all this dissolves, including punishment. Um, now I can see the atheists getting all, not the atheists, but the uh, spiritualists all getting happy saying, so everything's everything anyway, huh, brosy? So whether you're bad or whether you're good, we all pay, play a part in God's plan and we all end up being one anyway, whether we hate each other now or not, we're still, we're gonna have to adjust to the fact that we're all gonna be in the same boat. And we're gonna be one whether we like it or not. Now, I've heard that argument waged, especially in, in Christianity by the universalist uh, people that believe that all will be saved because it's not an act of man that saves us, it's Jesus alone so yeah, there will be punishment and there will be uh, crowns of glory, but in the end, everyone's gonna be one anyway. Whether you did evil and serve Satan or whether you did good and serve God, in the end, God cannot differentiate between good and evil, up and down, light and dark. Ultimately, the wedding of the lamb means the fusion back to the gestalt before God separated so that he could make all this creation happen into one thing. And, you know, that's true love. Where the opposites unite is what they call true love. That's the act of intercourse, really, ultimately. When there's a baby being born, it's really the opposites, male and female, uniting. And the result is the creation of life. And so this is all about birth and creation of life. And so, but I have not canceled out anything I've said because you see, long before the apocalypse, there was the understanding of John 17, which is we are one. The fact of the matter is, they that want to define themselves as separate from you um, can only go so far on their own before giving up. But I, I don't know how long forever and ever it is, the smoke of a tornado, it, I, until it's irrelevant, until no one needs to, to remember. Because in the very end of the book of the Apocalypse, God says, every tear is dried, Jesus says. And there'll be no more memory of this. And then that is the dissolution. At that point, that is the, the going from, um, you know, the, the, the many and the separate and the opposites and all that into the one called the living water. And... Anyone who wants to live in water can drink of it freely. At, at that point, you're not even dealing with the heaven and earth the way it was. Um, 
anyone can do that, but what it means is, you know, there is no individual. You know, these, or take the book of Daniel, um, these, the people on the righteous path will shine like the stars in heaven forever and ever, but there's a point where the, the stars and the moon and the sun are dissolved away. You see what I mean? Ultimately. But, um, you know, there will be a great divide and there will be a, a meeting out of either eternal torment or eternal shining like the stars in the firmament. But even that is not really, there's no hierarchy there and even that's not completely relevant. There's a point where that's not needed anymore. The differentiation of beings. And um, what it means after that, I don't know. You know, it's, it, it gets back to what is the seed of God? What is the, 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 the single notion of God that before anything is created, when there is no diversity of anything, of plants, animals, planets, when, it's just, when God is simply just a single point or even maybe no point because there's no more need for to assert a point at that point, you know, if you want to be philosophical about it. So therefore, um, the Buddhists would call God a void then in that point or the, the the reality of void. Um, it's incomprehensible, but here's what I'm here to tell you. It's not really relevant. What's relevant now is God is the, is, is the judge and justice. And the return of Christ is the armies of Christ and the vesture dipped in blood with you know, the revelation that he is the word of God. He's the final law of the land. And this justice is gonna be meted out. And if you don't want eternal punishment, then you would get on the right side of things. And um, the proof I have on this is that the world tends to want to put people to death that believe in God. You know, why? Um, how strange. Because if I had a planet that I invented, like I created it, there wouldn't be any, even a thought like that. Not even a thought. So, the sound here is my, my vape, uh, an electronic e-cigarette. It's, uh, I had actually uh, kind of fallen into a little bit of smoking for a while. And, oh, man, that really messed me up. And, and this is like, um, this is a very weak kind of nicotine. It's like chewy Nicorette gum, let's say. But definitely gets you out of it. It's definitely, an, you know, a good thing to do in the sense that it doesn't have any effect on you because it's water vapor. But um, call it nervous habit, it keeps me away from, yeah, no, I don't like the tobacco, yuck to cigarettes. That's kind of where I'm at right now. Most of the time they don't taste good anyway and, and I don't recommend it, but you know, you do whatever you have to do to get through this life, right? Some people need that cigarette just to get through that next moment. So not judging it, but for me, it's it's, it's definitely out. <laughs> it definitely doesn't. My, I, you know, at this age, I really can't. You know, I'm don't have the ability to fend it off. But you know, I'm of no age. Ultimately, I'm of no age. What I'm seeing before me is um, a return to where I was before this happened. But that would be in the future. So it's the bizarrest thing in the world. I can't explain it. You know, because I'm very conscious of of having uh, you know, taken the gloves off and, and, and whooped it up for the Lord. I'm very conscious of that. And I'm also conscious of having, uh, of having been disobedient and punished. So I seem to be conscious of both. Uh, one more, you know. starting to get lighter out and I'm, you know, this is, these fall mornings. Oh, I've, oh yes, I've considered uh, doing a communion, but I wanna do those live if I can. The, the whole point is, uh, what you were just thinking at this moment? Well, you don't need me. You can, you can go ahead and have that, uh, that rite of communion and that, uh, that imbibing of Jesus, ingesting of Jesus, symbolic for the 
the living spirit of God within you any time. Any time. Um, any church gives it out almost, you know, the Catholics give it out every week. And you can go there and have at it. No, it's not the same. It is the same. Uh, I wouldn't put it in that context. Of It is the same. It's not the same. Um, to the pure, all things appear, my friend. You can go to church, take part in communion, take part in worship songs. Um, I'm just here to tell you what that is you're doing. I mean... I'm here to tell you where you're going so that you don't get confused. You know, go with eyes open. Understand the risks. Um, I think the saddest thing that I think about is the idea that people led pretty good lives and they've really done nothing wrong. You know what I mean? They are part of the system and there is that. But I mean, everything else they've done is like charitable and this and that and the other thing. And they think because of all that, they're going straight directly to heaven, which they don't have a clue what it is. Because I mean, if they really understood heaven, they wouldn't want to go there. <laughs> there is no there. I mean, here's the point. There is no there with heaven. It's not like the place. There's, oh, there's heaven. I'm going to go there and there's pearly gates. There are no pearly gates. That's all child's speak. That's all kid's stories. Um, do you want to dissolve your individual self and be one with God? Are you ready for that? Well, then you're not ready for quote unquote heaven. Anyway, um, so yeah, most people want to be in this drama because they want to win. They want to get even. They want to come back. They want to do good if they did bad. They want to get even if they did good. I, I, I'm aware of both, doing good and doing bad. Being back here for on both counts. And I all I can tell you is that being with the Lord is, you know, on that side of things, on the side of the Creator, who is omnipotent. And that's, that's the right choice, by the way, because that's the only real choice. The other is an illusion or a deception. So if you want to live, if you want to exist, I thought you said everything's everything. <laughs> I never said everything's everything. I just talked about the ultimate position, the ultimate definition of God and his creation and, uh, and, and a resting point within of, of, of all this. Is there, is there a point of rest at the end of all this? New heavens and new earths, are, that, that brings the images of, um, you know, Star Trek or something. That's that's not what it means. You know, the creation itself is an act of love so that, you know, beings can come to know God and worship God and love God and he can love them. So it's, but it's really ultimately himself. And um, at, the, at the end of the day, he's the creator and at, at some point there was nothing, he, he created everything from nothing. So that's, you know, where it all ends up going as well. You know, I mean, that's the, that's the thing. But we all love the, the idea of being these beings, these individuals. And he does deal with us individually and he does support the individual. So that's very important. It's like when our constitution says that the rights of, of uh, you know, liberty and the pursuit of happiness and all that, these rights are, are, are self-evident and they flow from our creator. It's going to get worse, folks. You're going to see these people worshiping dung as, as mana. I mean, it will actually get to the point, you know. It's like when I see dogs eating the cat poop out of the cat box. You know, that doesn't happen too often. But it's going to, you know, they're going to get to a point of dumbness that you, you would think that that level could, <laughs> couldn't even be achieved. And you're going to be amazed at how far they will go to win their game, which they can't win because God's omnipotent. So they can't ever win. And the reason you're tuning in is you want to get, um, first of all, you want ease of your life. You want God and you want to be off yourself and into this 
adventure with him. And you don't want to look back and you don't want to lament and you don't want to be plagued with all the good and bad things you've done in this life and how you've fallen short and all the depression and self-pity and tears and conflicts with other people and um, you, you know the, the things that didn't work out through, through no fault of your own and sometimes through the fault of your own. You want to leave all that and go on with God. And I'm saying, well, that's available. Uh, but in the end of the day, in terms of the, 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 the wedding of the Lamb, which is the culmination of the end of Babylon and the people that stayed true throughout all of history, the fall of Babylon is basically can be summarized as the vengeance of a holy God against the people of the earth, earth dwellers, who have killed the, the good and the good people, the people of God, from the beginning of time. And now is the day of vengeance where they're finally gonna get their comeuppance and they and all who serve them and all who are conformed to that reality will forever and ever be tormented and all will remember and be aware of that torment during that period of time. There will be consequences, but they will be at the end of time, at the end of, in, you know, in the apocalypse. That's where the justice is meted out. And for the saints, that is those people that stay true to God even under death, they will um, be blessed with the um, uh, how can I put it? Well, I'll just say that you know you, you understand innately. There's no way I can put it into words, but they will be delivered and they will be made happy and they will be uh, restored, they will be eternal, they will be uh, as one. And, um, you know, the armies of God, armies, plural, um, are already one. No one can fight, you know, the irony of that is saying army of God is kind of a moot point because nobody can actually fight an army of God. There really is no problem when he returns, uh, faithful and true, who is the word of God, with a vesture dipped in blood, that means he wages war against all this, and it's really no problem. It's just, at that point, it's a mop-up operation, and the armies of God I liken to be all that served him throughout time immemorial, you know, who, who, who all the beings that are the armies of God are with him, and armies of angels and everything else, all together, creatures, angels, humans, whatever, all together. And um, this is a resurrected supernatural army that cannot be killed. You can fling nukes at it, at them, uh, it won't do anything. You can shoot machine gun fire at them, won't do anything. So there is a, but what's the point of that? The, the in, dramatically, in comes the white horse and the vesture and the you know, word of God and all that, and in comes the armies and all that at a certain point after the fall of Babylon. What's the, that's so dramatic, it's like a movie. My friend, if you were to film that, it would be the hokiest movie you ever saw. It would be as bad as that Islamic uh, thing on YouTube. See, it's not about what it literally seems to be saying. It's about justice. It's hokily written. If you were to film it as a movie, it would be hokey. It wouldn't be filled with tears and revelations and, and just filled with just the most unbelievable feeling, almost like a cosmic orgasm or something. That gushing out of, of all of our humanity into the throne of God and, and the absorption into the wedding of the Lamb. Uh, and in a sense, it's a re reward for something that had to do with time and space. But in another sense, it's already happened. And so it gets very difficult. There's edges of the uh, apocalypse we can't talk about because it deals with eternity, you know, around the edges. Like, we've been there, done that. Yes, we have. We've been there, done that. But oh, so sweet is that, that point of rest for these weary souls that is ours after putting up with being made lambs, that is, lambs are like easy pickings for the wolves, which is the world, and being beleaguered and killed and maligned and 
unable to defend ourselves and not having any street smarts and, you know, laughed at and all these different things and being targeted. Um, you know, the ones who target you aren't lambs. They're wolves. You, if you weren't a lamb, you wouldn't be targeted. It's really simple. And if you're an atheist who's been targeted or something like that, then you need to obviously have a discussion, you know, at some point with your maker. You've got to get right with that. I don't think there's any, any way I could emphasize that more. It's really between you and your maker, not your collective church, not your collective doing this and doing that, or your collective do-gooding. It doesn't matter how much. It's, it's great that you do good, but when it comes down to your soul, it doesn't matter. I'm not saying not to do good works. I'm just saying it's irrelevant. If you show up with the wrong garment on at the wedding feast, you're out. I don't care whether you were like Gandhi, you're out. And that is a, a point that makes people so mad that they would actually reject God on that point alone. And that's what I think causes many pastors to reject God in their seminaries and then and then, you know, enslave the people of the, of the congregations because I think what they, what they really are looking to do is get vengeance for how disappointed they are. They're not, a, this is all very subtle and they're not aware that they're doing this, but this is what they're doing and they're not aware of it, but they're, they're behaving. That's, in the end, that will be the conclusion that they got control of their congregations, that they were mind controlled, they were taught the wrong things and, um, you know, they, they, they wound up putting this, um, this, this false shepherd into a, 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 a light where he suddenly has power and money and the ability to wield his power over other people. And that's what, it, you know, he became God. And if you point it out to them, you're being judgmental. I mean, you know, the, <laughs> you uh, look, I've seen every scam there is, and, and, and it's just, it's its almost, you know, when you go to a used car lot, you're pretty sure you're going to get a horse trader there that you got to be more savvy than him or you're going to be taken to the cleaners, right? You understand that. So that, that's kind of the way it is with religion. And we all know that. A lot of jokes are made about it. You know, it's, it's basically, you know, for the gullible. It's the gullible that... You know, God does love the gullible and will make a way out for the gullible. But there's nothing God can do if he opens your prison cell and you sit there. There's, there's nothing anyone can do. You have to actually get up and walk out. And the reason people don't walk out is because they're afraid of losing their friends, losing their connections, losing their businesses, losing, you know, the, the, it's scary going out there because the only way we can walk out is alone. You don't walk out as, uh, so there's all this, as I said the other day, there's all this kind of like throwing around the pejorative term, all oh, the Lone Ranger Christian. Well, that's them telling you, you have to remain part of the collective or you're anathema to this church and organization, which couldn't be further from Jesus. That's about as far from Jesus as you could possibly get. That's uh, in the lap of Satan right there. Satan is the master of the collective. So, you know, I don't know what you're going to do with the truth here. I, I, um, it's not convenient, for sure. It's not easy. It's not something you can have a formula that works because it's different every day. Um, as opposed to the comfort of those experts will tell you it is the same every day. God's the same yesterday, tomorrow, and the next day, and everything's fine, don't worry. Everything is not fine, and do worry. And when I say worry, it's not in the vein of uh, disobeying Jesus in the uh, Sermon on the Mount. When I say worry, I mean get upset, get very upset. If you aren't really sure of what you believe and where you stand, then worry, please, worry big. Um, Separation, justification, what are the concepts that the Lord talks about? The circumcision of the heart, indwelling of the Holy Spirit, which is separation from the Babylon system, which brings persecution and death to you know many because it's what the whole book of Revelation and the apocalypse is really, it's only about vengeance and the setting things right and justice, right? Vengeance and justice. 
that's basically, you know, and the love of God for his people and the, the deliverance of his people from the beginning of time on throughout the entire creation and the wrapping up of the, uh, of the story of the creation from Genesis to Revelation, which means the apocalypse. The apocalypse means the end of all things. So, well, it actually means the revelation, you know, it means to the reveal and the unveiling, but the unveiling means is the entry into what was there all along, but that would mean if the truth was unveiled, then that would be the end of this system. I've given it, I've tried for wiggle room, folks. I mean, I've really, really, really tried to find a way. I have really tried to find any wiggle room at all where I could say, yeah, well, you know, we're all fine and everything's good and, what? you know, just kind of take care of one another and, you know, um, it just, you know, to put it in the words of Paul Simon and his song, A Mother and Child Reunion, it just don't work out that way. Does it, Paul? <laughs> the joke of that, well, the joke of that is it's, it's almost like a, uh, you know, Paul Simon putting into the context of a court justifying the satanic way and that he can't leave his kid alone because, you know, any resistors get... Uh, have a hard time and so he's going to have to help boost him into the saddle and get him going down the wrong path uh, you know because it just don't work out that way that anyone no no one is well he's right in his song it's it's a you know it's it's a prophetic from the other side song but what it means is basically no one is left alone here you're, you're either tortured by one or the other and, and probably by both most of the time you've been here certainly I've been tortured backwards and forwards and by God and the devil, it seems. You know what I mean? There's just, because I'm the kind of person that just wants peace and I want everyone to be at peace. And, you know, I like to see people do well. And um, I like to sing music uh, to the Lord and, and to be creative and, you know, be an artist and all that. And, and you know, that's my basic way to, is to be a happy person. And this thing just ruins that. You know, I there is no rest. You know, like, like, in that old 1971 song was it 71 or 72 or whatever yeah that's old um a little trivia about that song mother and child reunion it was recorded at jimmy cliff's studio in jamaica and it had a kind of reggae background of things and that was pretty cool but the song itself was just the same old same old it's basically just saying okay look this is the way the world is and some people likened it to a divorce and, a, and a being in a courtroom. And that's fine. There's courtroom Im imagery too. But beyond, but again, like the Bible uses lots of metaphors, right? To describe something. Court is a great metaphor for describing the, the situation with God. Um, court is also, and divorce is also a good metaphor for, you know, uh, you know there, there always needs to be, if there's a satanic message in something, there has to be cover of something normal. So that when they write up a Wikipedia, they can say, this song is really about. Um, this song is really about uh, basically the uh, trauma of divorce or something, or like in the, the case of Hey Jude, this song is really about um, the trauma that uh, I, I, I even forget the story now. But um, was it the trauma of um, Julian Lennon losing his father uh, to either divorce or to? Um, to death. I'm not sure exactly. I'm, now I'm not sure of my timing, but probably it was to divorce because that happened, that was written even before 1970. So it would have been before John Lennon was actually killed. So they say, well, that's what it's about. And if you look up Wikipedia, that's what it's about. Then, then you see this, another guy say, no, it's really all about masturbation, which of course isn't exactly true either. But then he goes on and on about how he, he, and he, he makes a very good case for it to be that, you know, basically, uh, you know, do this and you won't have the pain over that. And it's almost hilarious. It's just, you just start dying laughing reading it. It's almost <laughs> like, it's, I almost feel like, shoot, you know, I wish I had said that. It was pretty funny. It was somewhere along the line of some commentary on lyrics. But it's not really about either one. Ultimately, it's about spiritual affiliation and 
conformity and, you know, the oath to this world in exchange for, you know, happiness or having the pressure taken off or make it easy for you. And, um, you know, the same thing with Mother and Child Reunion. All these songs are kind of related in that way. They, you know, Come On and Take a Free Ride by the uh, Edgar Winter band was just uh, almost classic. They're using the imagery, oddly enough, of, of the Bible, <laughs> you know, but Free Ride isn't about anything. And then you have Fog Hat um, in their song, uh, is their song Slow Ride, you know, Take It Easy. Then you have the Beatle, the, the Eagles song, Take It Easy. So they're getting this phrase, take it easy. Then you have Ringo Starr singing, you can play them easy, take it easy. So there's this easy thing going on, like easy means a metaphor for conforming to the world or whatever. Any kind of which way and any kind of imagery, I mean, I've seen it all. I've, I've analyzed all these lyrics and I, I don't hold anyone responsible. You know, it's, it's, I just see what it is. Um, you know, the, the, the majority is doing this. When in Rome, do as the Romans do, and you'll be left alone, and you'll be able to have your life, and, you know, don't, don't ruin your life. Jew, don't make it bad. You know, go along. This is the majority. This is what they want. Just do it, and it'll be fine. And that's, you know, and to the person of God, it's, okay, that's the big wide path of their salvation, do the opposite. It won't be fine, but you go with the Lord. It's like, well, nobody wants to do that. That would be very unpopular. In other words, ruin my life, ruin my career, ruin my, my uh, chances, and just become a living sacrifice for God? Like, like you know, that I might even not even be around very long. That's right, dude, that's it. Which one would you rather do? Which one would you rather do? It's a, it's a pisser, isn't it? I mean, which one would you rather do? Go the, the big wide path of acceptance and, you know, the world as your oyster and, and, you know, being, but, okay, but see, here's the thing. And then I come along and I'm telling you, game over for the wide path. In other words, that way is no longer available. I promised you this day would come. This is just before you have a global war. This is what happens. People suddenly realize, oh my God, what have we done? Back to bridge on the river Kwai. It's the same thing. You built the bridge for the enemy. Now the enemy trucks are coming. You can hear them. What are you going to do? That, if they get successful crossing that bridge, they're going to kill all of you. I told you this day was coming. I don't want it. I... I Here's what I'd like. I'd like just to be at a nice, you know, probably about 20 years younger, tip-top shape, being on a hammock uh, on a little island with lots of coconuts and fish and stuff and perfect waves to ride every day. And, um, you know, I'd like to make some drums out of like hollowed out palm trees. <laughs> you know, just have this beautiful day. Not bother anybody. I don't want to bother him. And I'm, I've heard from many, many on the satanic side. They don't want to bother with me. Uh, you know, though they, they, but they just said they have to. And it's like, I don't want to bother with you, but I have to. You know, and, I, and what I say makes you really mad and what you say makes me mad or I reject anyway. Any of your justifications, any of your music, I just consider you inane, you know, or um, vapid or... Um, banal or something like that. I mean, I consider all those songs aforementioned um, stupid because you're advocating for people to just basically kill themselves. But that's not how it, you know, but I understand. So long as this world is running, you're right. But the minute things start slipping and the edges of the theater are showing, that this is all on a stage. And it's starting to become obvious that this whole thing wasn't real in the first place. You come running to people like me. Because you want me to make it, you understand. But then what I have to say, you don't want to understand that. So it, 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 you, but it's got nothing to do with me and you. You don't matter. See, that's, it's hard for you to understand that because you've always, your whole life, you know, like, like Obama's classic, he goes around 
from what I've read recently is, is, is in Bob Woodward's stuff and other people's stuff, apparently Obama goes around um, uh, applauding himself for how good he is at, say, bowling or these, whatever endeavor he has. He, he always makes it a competition with everyone around him that he's going to do better than you. I know this is a demon. This is, I know another guy just like this. And, you know, whether it's tennis or any contest, he'll, he'll work behind the scenes to get to the point where he can defeat you, you know. And then he tells people that he's, and he's even gone on TV saying he was the greatest president since Lincoln before, when his presidency was only in its infant stages, before it had ever done anything or been, you know, he'd already said that historically his is the top two or three presidencies in the world, in the history of the United States. He's in the top two or three. And he's trying to also, he's also contacted historians trying to give them a cue on what to write about him about how great he is. I, I mean, he's an egotist. To, you've never, this, this goes beyond, you know, this is, this is just sheer insanity. But I mean, but that's what he does on a, like a daily basis. And, um, you know, he's a perfect product of this society, of, of this um, satanic cultural ethos. He is a perfect rendition of of someone that is so deluded and so far gone in in his narcissism, which is what the system breeds. You know, it's all about you, right? Um, that it should be obvious to any, especially now during the apocalypse, that you know where not only will his presidency fail, all everything will fail. And they double down on self-aggrandizement and self-promotion right at that point to where it almost looks silly. And now you're going, oh God, Obama and everybody. Oh, it's all bad. Where am I going to go? And my answer to you is this. There's nowhere you can go because, you know, if you want to take some comfort in this, know that the forces of darkness or the leaders of the world, if you like, they're both one and the same, will there will be justice you know and that that's what all this is about it all falls apart so that all the people that created the universities and the degrees which they did for as a vetting process they don't give a damn whether you study this or that or the other thing and it's, it's, it's got nothing to do with that it's got it's a vetting process so you can get a job so you can be conformed to society and get a job and they don't have to worry about you you know, and the reason they get power off it is because you give your soul in the process to them. That gives them the power, and then you're just basically a slave. And you're working in so it doesn't matter what country you're in. It's it's you're a slave anyway. Um, all that is now being exploded as irrelevant. The people that get the college degrees, for example, are unable to find work. Okay, so that whole thing now is blown up. It's a myth. It was a lie. All the people that conform to the satanic society of nod, wink, and then it'll be okay, and then, you know, pretending to be good people on the surface, and, you know, that whole tortured thing, now their whole system is blown up. It was all a lie. Meet the new boss, same as the old boss. I'll bring the who into this. The who, uh, uh, you, you know, they don't need salvation. What is, what is, the, uh, what is the song? Uh, Won't be fooled again give a nod to the new prostitution, which is the same thing as all the other songs. Um, the new prostitution isn't paying, is over. There is no new prostitution anymore. So on every level that you look at in society, it's imploded. Everything that they conform for, or rather worship for, bowed down for, is blown out of their hands, gone. Everything that they bowed down for and hoped to get is gone. All the connections they had can't save them because they don't, the connections they had, those people don't have an answer either. Because I contend, ladies and gentlemen, that the whole point is the end of you, the end of all, the just and the unjust alike, the end of. And my proof is, in my thesis here, is that everything has worn out and the people are in denial. They don't want to look at that. 
if they did, they, many would commit suicide. They, they wouldn't have to be killed by war. They would just kill themselves. I had people say that if I was right, they would kill themselves. Well, it's not that I am right. It's that the truth is right. And not right now, you are seeing the absolute proof of what I've said. And what they'll do is have a war to cover up the idea, you know, to be able, basically, the, from the spiritual side, it's, it's the motivation is, they need a war to kill you before you repent. That's basic. Because, right, when everyone figures out what's happened, and it, it's happened past tense already, okay? All the nations are bankrupt. It's, it's already over. But if they figure, if you wake up, so they have to keep the news media keeping you going to think, you know, there's, it's not going to be what it is, to keep you on the line that is soulless, because you gave it to them in exchange for your little life, um, they're just... In order, so what they have to do now is be, see because that deal with the devil it never sticks you don't want to know why because he doesn't have the right in other words you can repent at any time and be redeemed you did not give up your soul you did not sign a deal with the devil you did not uh, in bowing down to them lose your salvation I mean if you stay there it will be your choice but I mean there's always a way back to the Lord Unless there isn't, and that's for the hardcore that are just, you know, they're just made that way to be like that. You know, they're not going to repent. But basically, you still have a chance. So they know that. So now it's like, well, before they get out of it, that's like getting out of your debt. It's like getting a, 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 a go-free pass. They don't want you to have that, because that means they would lose their power. So they're going to have a war to kill you, and just so that you don't repent, to get you before you in a state of confusion before you know what's happened. And that's the game on the very highest level. That's how the game is played. That's the way they think. On the lower level, there's all these distractions and false uh, uh, paradigms about what it's really about. It's really ultimately about souls and the destruction of humanity on the one side and the redemption of souls and the restoration of humanity and the and the um, the the, um, the 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 restoration in Zion in the Promised Land of God, um, you know, and and two sides clashing with each other, and so at that level, the, this grand chess game goes on, and the Illuminati plays at that higher level, and they're looking at it. You know, gee, I wonder if they ever wake up and find out abortion is a, is a, is how we feed, um, you know, our master. If they figure out that that's really blood sacrifice. Oh, they'll never figure that out because it's all secular and institutionalized. So they'll never, you know, things like that. They, they, they figure you won't ever figure that out. If you ever figure out that you've been on the Truman Show the whole time and this entire thing is phony and all of it has to do with what your choice is, who you're going to serve, you know, what your choice is. If you ever figure that out, then you would choose Yahweh, Jesus, wouldn't you? Everyone would. When there's no further move you can make, there's no more money to make, it's when everything's off the table, where, where you, you, know, you can, you can um, do their ritual, and go through their degrees and bow down and all that stuff, it yields nothing. Get your degree, go out and get a good job, no, it yields nothing. All those things that are part of the enslavement no longer work. So you're seeing that, uh-oh, the set's gotten tired. You see lights have fallen down onto the ground, like in the Truman Show. Remember, they'd find like a, you know, these, these powerful uh, stage lights falling down. Like in the middle of the street, there's a stage light and Truman finds it. You know, so the, now that the, the set's starting to wither, they need painters to paint the set. You're starting to look around the edges and you're seeing none of this was real. And every move you made after yourself. You are simply a walking dead. There is no goal. You know, you can get an award, an Academy Award, a Grammy, a this or that or whatever, but it me it's meaningless today. Because there is no system to uphold it. There is no history that will be written in the future about this. There is no one that will remember you for having achieved greatly or not. All your trophies are as as waste and cankered and rusted and are meaningless in the, in, the, in, in the what is to come. 
So therefore, um, and what are these people doing here, preaching things like that? Well, they've come here to bring this thing about. Um, they didn't bring it about themselves. It was preordained to happen when it's going to, when it's happening. And the people that are here on this planet talking about it or bringing it forth or praying about it or, you know, aware of it or whatever, um, were meant to be here at that time so that there would be a, a, a way to understand it. Because I can tell you this, most people are just going to keep trying to go to work and they're going to keep trying to go to their churches and keep trying to go to their golf tournaments and they're going to keep trying to they're going to keep trying to keep on, though, you know, until the last second to where they can't do that, until it's locked down and there's no more gasoline and nothing in the markets to buy and until it's that way. But the kicker there is they have to not, they have to block you from repenting. That's where your news media comes in. That's where the movie business comes in. That's where the entertainment business of sports and music and all that uh, they, they come in with these banal, vapid kinds of themes about honey baby and all that, so you can listen to them and go dance and enjoy yourself. But the dancing has stopped and the music has stopped. We're in that very hollow time. You can hear a pin drop. In that very, very difficult time. They're trying to whistle by the graveyard. They're not even paying attention to you right now. They're whistling by the graveyard, hoping they can get, a, get, a, get away with it. They, they're, they're behind closed doors. They're going, oh, what have we, oh my God. What are we going to do? That's what they're doing. We can't let them know what's happening. <laughs> That's what they're doing. They're like little children. They wouldn't understand. Would you understand? But that's how they think of you, like little children, like little nothings that they need to lead around for their power. You know, you're kind of like a battery pack for them. It's about them, not you. And they figure you're going you're gonna to wake up one day and figure that out, and you're going to take to the street and write, and one day you'll even kill them. That's what they think you're going to do. Actually, I'm their best friend. I'm the best friend they got in the business, in this business, because... Uh, I would advocate that instead of wasting your time protesting and going after them, that you get right with God yourselves. If that gives them a pass, they ought to thank me. I don't expect it, that they would ever even acknowledge that anything that's true is true. But the point is, is that it's got nothing to do with them. Writing and, and blaming them and burning effigies of Obama and all this, that he's responsible or Hillary's responsible uh, is irrelevant. It's a waste of time. And, but, uh, um, you know, the, the thing they don't want is the focus put on them, that, that, that the whole world will be after them, that they'll be blamed. So they're doing everything they can, moving heaven and earth and the media, to tell you that it's, it's not their fault and, and ahead of time so that you won't blame them later when the, when the food riots come. And so what I'm here to tell you is um, forget all that of laying blame and you just get right with the Lord. And that is the answer to the situation. I don't care if you conformed to this, if you were one of their soldiers or assassins or one of their lackeys, I don't care what level you're on at it, um, just get right with the Lord and that's the solution to your problem, period. I don't care if you're a criminal or in the mafia or whatever you're doing, that'd be the ultimate in this, right? The mafia, right? The, the elite uh, units of, of, of who have the snake as their symbol of, of special ops or whatever. Whatever you've done, it doesn't matter. You've got a chance because you're going to go home and you might as well go, you know, you, at this point, you might as well just go right. As far as the people that say, Z, wrong paradigm, to you, my friend, I feel sorry. The Lord must show you he must show you the truth of what this paradigm is all about. He must show you what this world is. You don't know. You're assuming it's one thing. You read too many conspiracy. Look, I find that the, the difficult, most difficult people for the Lord to reach are the conspiracy theorists. They are so caught up and they think they know everything so much that you, you can't. And most of these are also tipping their hat to the left wing. A lot of them are. So they're, they're convinced there's no God. They've become spiritual. They've become all kinds of stuff. 
but they're very nasty and they're not going to listen ever. Their job is to keep everyone thinking it's an Illuminati conspiracy and it's the Jews' fault in the Vatican and to keep you right there and have you with no faith, no nothing, and to keep listening to them. And it's almost like they're there to hold you in place so you can be eliminated. I'm, I'm sure, I'm positive they're not aware of that, what I just said. But most people are not aware of what they do, you know, or what role they're playing. If they don't know the truth, then they don't know what role they're playing. So they think they're doing good, but they're not, you know. Just like it says, they'll kill you and think they're doing God's service. They'll kill the children of God thinking that they're doing God's will. That was the uh, Inquisition. Um, this is typical of this planet. So we should not be surprised to see this kind of thing going on again. And, um, you know, the, the, the point is, is beware of the conspiracy theorists trying to take away your energy and, and, and keep you on the farm. Be, be aware of that. Be aware of the elixirs of society trying to give you sex, drugs, and rock and roll as, 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 a, as your end reward, as your nirvana. Just be aware that that becomes an addiction. Just be aware in, in criminality that once you get away with it once, you're going to keep trying to get away with it. It becomes an addiction to see if you can. And all these ways lead to destruction. There's only one way to God, and it's a very narrow path, and it really, you have to really pretty much be sick of this world, and sick of this situation, to enter into it. And I myself prefer, and I'm going to shock you, I would prefer the satanic way to have actually worked, but not been evil and hurt people, you know, not, not have the real secret of, you know, that the key to you rising up in society is you got to hurt the other guy and that it's the other guy's pain that actually boosts you further. Without that pain, you don't go further. You know that what I mean? There's, let's say that wasn't true. It was just like this innocent thing. It was just like one big Disneyland. I would like that if I could just go to my little island uh, and not be bothered. You know, if there was a way but it seems like all the exits are locked, and plus the, the movie set we're on, like I said, people are starting to figure out that that's what it is and not really a planet. And, um, you know, it's just hard to take. It, it really is. So I suppose today I'm speaking to a lot of people on the fence. The only reason you're on the fence, my friend, is because you've been brainwashed you know, by the media, by popular culture, by, by the situation you find yourselves in. You've been brainwashed to believe that this is real. I mean, that's the first deception. And so you've done, as in Rome, what everyone else has done to get along here, which is, you know, no one blames you for that. There's no blame. No one, yeah, it turned out that you did a lot of bad things with a lot of people, I know. But the thing is, um, you know, to get yours and whatnot. But the thing is, is that, it's irrelevant. That's, of course, the logical reaction to the situation. The way out of it is the word of God, God, the Lord, whatever. If that is the way. You've got to have to go seek him, you know, and repent and ask him if, you know, to help you repent, or, you know, in everything, help you understand. Because that is the answer to this problem. And that's why I've, because a lot of the time of the day, I'm until I get back to the Word of God or back to some prayer or something, I'm very bugged at what I see because I don't want to see the people suffer. I'm not like a lot of these people and say, oh, they'll get theirs. Just you wait. I used to have that because, you know, I was suffering and they didn't care. And, but now I feel sorry for them. So it's kind of a, that's the evolution of my own consciousness. I just feel sorry for all the suffering and all the trouble on this planet. I feel sorry that it has to be. Any conscious being cannot find happiness here because it's always going to be bittersweet because you're always going to be aware of enforced starvation, the, you know, the abortion issue, people you know, wanting to create wars, hurting innocent people. You're always going to be aware of all these bad things going on. 
And so that any elation that you would have when you're having a nice day in the park, it would be fleeting. You'd have it for that day. But, you know, somewhere it will occur to your mind on a nice, beautiful Sunday afternoon that um, where you're just under the trees and, you know, it's the fall and, you know, you got hopes and dreams. But somewhere along the line, well, maybe when you're driving back and someone cuts in front of you or, you know, there's 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 construction on a detour, they get your car muddy, whatever it is, you're going to be aware that that happiness you had was fleeting. Even the most God-fearing, who just have their eyes on the Lord the whole time, hallelujah, hallelujah, um, half the time suffer. And they have to keep getting themselves back to that praise state in order to feel okay again. And on the Satan side, they have their methods of feeling okay again too. So everyone's doing this kind of like I don't know, band-aid patchwork. For the people of God, it's a struggle. For the people of Satan, it's a struggle. Now it's a struggle for everybody. And that's, but see, that's what's giving me a little bit of hope right now, that everyone's in the same boat. What I would like to see is, I don't want to see people suffer if they don't have to. I don't want to see people commit suicide if they don't have to. I don't want to see people applauding their own deaths. I know that's what I'm going to see, but I mean, I don't want to see it. I want to see the opposite. I want to see people understand, hey, this illusion is breaking thin. We can now see what it's really going on. We've been duped. Not suicide as a response. Like say you're an atheist. Okay, well then, you, you know, and you realize that by being an atheist, you have more faith in God than anybody. I know that's, that's but I'll probably just leave that alone. That's probably too 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 much. The atheists are the most faithful to God. Oh, maybe you're like a communist and want to kill anyone who believes in God or Jesus because that's what they did back then. That's kind of the the spirit of communism, right? Um you have an opportunity now to wake up and see how all of your systems are failed and that everything that man did had nothing to do with you. You were just used. And, you know, the rich people of the earth that are calling the shots right now, they don't have you in mind, okay? I'll just take a quote from George Carlin. They don't give up about you. You don't matter to them. The thank you, the, the, you know, thank you for being my slave, they'll say. Thank you for helping me get what I want off your back. Now go die. And I think if you understood that, if people understood that, I think there'd be a lot of happiness to understand that there's a solution. The solution is not to do more of what the world has done for thousands of years, serving false gods and demons and fallen angels that are hell-bent on the destruction of humanity from the get-go, and that you're rewarded for doing bad things that help in that regard. Two, rather, this whole thing, all of this is irrelevant to begin with, but the only life you're going to really have, ultimately, is with God. Otherwise, you will perish, and uh, you know then there will be meted out, that whole karmic thing of torment. And if you don't want to be there, then you need to come out. The Bible says in Revelation 18, come out of her and be separate. It doesn't say that, you know, you're, whatever you did, and, you know, it just says come out of her and be separate. And since we are in the apocalyptic time, I find this book to be just mana from heaven for me. But um, it said, and I heard another voice come from heaven. This is a voice from heaven. This is a voice from on high saying, come out of her, my people, that you not be partakers of her sins and that you receive not of her plagues. Come out of her. And talking about the whore of Babylon, come out of the, of the whore, of the beast system. Come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sins. So that, in other words, if you, if you come out of her, the only way out is Jesus, but that washes your sin clean. So that no matter how much you did sin with her, 
you would be not seen, it's a legal issue, you would be seen as not sin under the veil of, under the um, covering of Christ, you'd be seen as not sin legally before the, uh, your honor. And um, so that the wrath to come, you would, you would escape in that, you know, in other words, that, that whole torment of uh, the smoke going up forever and ever and all that, all those images that you've seen later in Revelation 19, um, you know, the voice is saying, come out of her, my people. If you do come out of her, then you are his people. You know, wake up from your delusion, understand this whole, what this whole thing's about, step away because otherwise you will be seen as her sin and be blamed for all the sins from the beginning of time will be on your head. That's, see, that's why Jesus was punished for all the sin of all time, including the future. Put on his head so we could go free. So belief in him is what separates you from that. And that's why they uh, persecute, you know. No, they don't persecute the official state-run churches because there's no threat there of them. There's no threat, no spiritual threat. But... Um, a real person having the, un you know, it's hard to explain because unless you're shown a lot of this, it will make no sense to you. But um, God is a God of math. He's a God of logic. He's a God of symmetry. He's a God of justice. And let me explain this. Justice will be perfect. And a message like this is simply to awaken you from a long slumber so they understand what, the, what, what this is all about, what your life, my life, our lives, from waking until back to sleep, what, it, what this is, what the purpose of the, what, it's really, you know, you, it's really not about us and not about you building your, you know, foundation of your family and then passing it on to future generations. That's already out the window anyway. And that you establish your family name and pride and go forth and build your businesses and be successful and have your marriages and have your eating and drinking and celebrations and give yourselves awards and then go on into the promised land. It's not really about that. That was something that was fed to us all. That if you're not a part of that, you're a loser. And it's your own fault because it was offered freely to anyone who wanted it. And the problem with that is, but nothing is free, so it wasn't really offered for free, was it? All right, with that, I'm going to go. But with that, I bid you shalom, shalom. I love you. I'm praying for you. And I really would like to see this week a mass repentance based on the fact that you know it's over. That there really is, you can see it wearing down. Thin. I mean, I'd like to see a mass repentance, not, not based on my daddy versus your daddy or this versus that. Not on any kind of competition or pride. Just based on the realization of you, a rational human being, and me, a rational human being, realizing what it is and taking the, the move, the right move, and forgetting what our lives were or how we thought we were going to win. And you, no one's going to win because we're all going to die anyway. So that, that, that truth, the revelation, should come to anyone who's sick and infirm and awaiting death right now as well. And by all means, if you do die, that tunnel of light where all your friends are and all that, that's, if you see that, that just means you've, you've died outside the Lord. Don't go into that. Ask the Lord, if you can remember, for help right then and there. You know, I don't know if there's any help after death, I, you know, but if there is, maybe that would work. And uh, when's all this death gonna happen? I don't know, five years, one year? tomorrow? I have no idea. I really don't. I've got not one specific thing on timing except how weird was it that after that word was given, those riot, all that escalation looking like a prelude to World War III. I mean, that was pretty, you know, amazing, right? I mean, it's like, yeah, yeah, you see what's coming. And again, my basis for that logic is the fact that the money ran out and, um, so that's, that's what asked, you know, so at that point, uh, it's really a decision of what 
it, in their mind, it's a decision of what, what civilization will be here. In my mind, it's, a, it, it, it's a, all bets are off. It's whether humanity will be here and, and whether it will be um, what kind of thing we will see here. I mean, I agree with the idea of what will be here, but I disagree that it would be either you know, Islamo-fascism or the Judeo-Christian West. I disagree with that paradigm. It'll be one or the other, let's say. Greeks or the Romans. I disagree with that. But I think we're in the, the time of extreme supernatural um, events. And uh, uh, the whole alien thing is kind of encroaching around the sides, too. You hear about Mars, the spheres on Mars and stuff. It's like they're, they're kind of, they're, you know, they're, they're, they're flirting with playing with that card because they think that'll get them off the hook. <laughs> And anyway, I, I wish I could just, yeah, we could all just get together and, you know, play badminton and uh, talk about the good old days, eh? You know? But there, when I look back, it all seems like an illusion. It, it doesn't, you know, but I do look, I do see how God's hand and the angel's hand was on me to guide me through these troubled waters, but it's trouble for everybody, you know? The Satanists think that if we would just be like them, then it'd be a good world. The Christians are thinking if we'd all just be like them, it'd be a good world, the, you know, the, the kind of culture Christians. And both are wrong, terribly, terribly wrong. It's not about the, their idea of civilization. It's got nothing to do with that. It's a false um, paradigm, again. Again and again and again and again. It's, an, it's another deception. Yes, there are Christians involved in deceiving themselves and others, which is why many of the people on the world side stay away, um, saying that, you know, it's no different being in there in your church than it is being out here. It's both the same thing, which is, but, but that's such a narrow way of looking at reality. It's such a bigger reality than just my daddy versus your daddy. I mean, we've got to, at some point, grow up and be adults and look at it uh, as, as with a little bit of wisdom instead of just this kind of comic book paradigm. It's, there's got to be a way out of that, but I don't know. I don't know. I've got to go. I said I was going to go, and now I'm gone.